So how do you go from this to that? Larvin Voorhees has an incredibly sad story and we all have watched it unfold for those who are familiar with her story. It's like watching a family member go through this, but her story goes deep and we're gonna have to go back all the way into her childhood and take a really deep dive on when did it fall apart and what are some dark secrets that Saved by the Bell was actually holding. Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And don't forget to turn on your notifications bell so you never miss an upload. Without further ado, let's get into this story. For those who are not too familiar, she is best known as Lisa Turtle from Saved by the Bell. And she was just stunning on screen, very gorgeous. Girl, we watched her literally grow up in front of our faces and just was one of those icons, especially in the 90s. I don't wanna share the clips, her interview clips, where she's not coherent. Sharing the pictures are enough for me. When Locke Voorhees was born to Trisha and Wayne Holloway on March 25th, 1974 in Nashville, Tennessee, she was the only child of the family. Unfortunately, her parents divorced when she was just 11 months old. And at the age of two, she and her mother moved to Pasadena, California. Although Lark was photogenic even as an infant, she was shy by nature and so her mother hesitated to put her in front of a camera until she felt more comfortable. There's not too much on her mom and her, but just from small passages like that, though they say that she was the one interested in acting, etc., it does sound a little bit like maybe, just maybe, her mom probably pushed her into this because she even said so herself on the Wayans. One of the Wayans brothers, I was watching an interview she did. I went down the rabbit hole watching all of her interviews. She said that she was pretty shy all her life. She didn't talk much and she wouldn't talk unless she had something to say or she was reading her lines. And Screech, Dustin Diamond from Say by the Bell, corroborated that story in his own book where he said on set she was always very quiet and to herself and didn't speak much to people and people found her weird because she was to herself so she never sounded like she fully could blend in with her cast at work and even when she was on shows it always looked like if you see her interviews from back in the day yeah she was charismatic she was on the show she was pushing it but I can always tell a timid shy person when I see them and it seemed like she had a deafening shyness about her from a very young age so at the age of 12, however, Lark Voorhees was finally ready to make her mark on the entertainment industry. Her mother told People Magazine that when Lark got on stage, a whole different side of her came alive, end quote. This eagerness led to young Lark appearing in many commercials for popular products, such as Mattel toys and Barbie dolls. She also had a small role in the hit movie Troop Beverly Hills, starring Shelley Long. Lark Voorhees soon attracted attention from television producers who cast her in several television shows, including Kids Incorporated and Good Morning Miss Bliss, which later became Saved by the Bell, where she gained notoriety playing Lisa Turtle until 1993. At this time, Lark had already landed roles in other shows, such as In Living Color, Days of Our Lives, and The Bold and the Beautiful. However, it was Saved by the Bell that truly made her famous. Here's a quick fun fact many don't know. On The Bold and the Beautiful, Voorhees played the role of the intern fashion designer Jasmine Malone beginning in September 1995. She was released from her contract in November 1996 when her role required her to act in, you know, sensual scenes, which the actress refused to do, citing her religious beliefs as a Jehovah Witness. So they let her go because she didn't want to do those scenes. The success that came with being part of such a popular show like Saved by the Bell allowed Lark to do numerous interviews with magazines like Teen Beat and Seventeen, giving fans an insight into what it was like being a teenager living in Hollywood while trying to focus on schoolwork too. By all accounts, Accounts, it seemed that Voorhees had found critical acclaim but would still remain humble throughout her life despite becoming somewhat of a household name. Now let's get into some of the dark secrets they tried to hide with Saved by the Bell. Like so many child stars, the Bell cast got screwed by the deal they signed. Let's start off with that. At the time, no one suspected that Saved by the Bell would become a huge phenomenon, right? So being young and naive, they were children, okay? The stars signed contracts, meaning they didn't make anywhere near as much money as you think they would given the success of the show. As Gosler confessed, he said, we made really bad deals, poor deals back then. It is what it is. You move on, you learn. Experience, end quote. But elsewhere, he also put it bluntly stating, it was a Saturday morning show. It was the first of its kind. We didn't get paid 
nothing for it, end quote. Moreover, the cast do not make money from the show's syndication nor from its merchandise. Everyone makes mistakes when they're young, but most of us don't have to live with that knowledge that, you know, the mistakes as through the years you learn more like, dang, I am sitting out on thousands and thousands of dollars monthly because of this contract with a show that blew up this much. That's pretty bad, right? Enough to piss you off if you got older to see how these kids missed out on a lot, on a lot on the show, on their childhood. They were robbed of their childhood. According to Diamond, Dustin Diamond's book, Behind the Bell, both Mario Lopez and Mark Paul allegedly hooked up with all three girls of the Bell cast members, Tiffany Amber Tyson, Elizabeth Berkeley, and Mark Voorhees. Diamond even claimed that the actors engaged in wild and crazy threesomes. Diamond details how his fellow actors basically just took turns pairing off and rotating around. He told People Magazine in 2009 that all of us dated at one point or another. It was incestuous, end quote. So there was a lot going on. And remember, these were kids. These were kids, okay? Sometimes the girls would gang up on the guys. Tiffany and Elizabeth would hate me and then they'd hate Lark because Lark was talking to me and Mario was supposed to side with someone. All that stuff you did in high school, like how could you talk to him? And then Tyson added, did we have crushes on our co-stars? Absolutely, she said, but we were so young. So what was going on? He was basically dating Lark at one point and all the girls hated her on set. Like they hated her because she was dating him for three years as a show. We're going to get into that when we get into her relationship. So it was a form of like bullying on set, according to the men, that it would be like they'd gain up on her. And who knows what that can do to you if you're a shy, timid child, you know, and then you have to work with these people. You have adults that are pressuring you and pushing you. And then behind the scenes, these people that you spend most of your day with and you're missing out on your childhood with, don't like you because you're dating this guy and then on top of that you're one of the only black cast members on this show could you imagine some of the cast members revealing to the hollywood reporter that sometimes we loved each other and sometimes we hated each other there were moments where peter engel had to sit us down and say guys we have to film a show here because sometimes we weren't talking to each other end quote so again there was the silent treatments there was the fights because of their demanding schedules and newfound fame the cast missed out on a lot of normal high school experiences Voorhees told people she wasn't able to go to her graduation or prom those moments we had to sacrifice we made up for it with each other end quote behind the bell a tell-all book by dustin diamond claims that nbc paid a woman to remain silent about mario lopez alleged date our ape of her to paraphrase diamond's words he says lopez lured a woman back to his pad and she was forced to have relations against her will with him and quote many will dismiss this as another one of diamond's fabrications but a 1993 article in variety lends credibility to diamond's story okay according to this article police were looking into a teen's claim that lopez took advantage of her physically at his home. The prosecution, however, decided to drop the charges because they lacked sufficient evidence. In his book, Diamond claimed that the young woman was paid around $50,000 by lawyers for NBC to keep quiet. And this was something, this is something that still happens today in Hollywood where studios, if their stars are caught in a huge scandal, they have like the Olivia Popes <laughs> behind the scenes. They still had them back then. They called them fixers. We talked about that for our old vintage Hollywood starlet breakdowns how fixers allow starlets to even get away with murder. Like they would cover it up. And if this was going on behind the scenes and the studios were covering it up, who knows what else was happening, okay? I'm just trying to put a lot of pieces together and I wanna see what you guys have to say in the comments. Let's get into her relationships real quick. The actress like Voorhees and Mark Paul shared a chemistry that went beyond their on-screen roles as boyfriend and girlfriend. It turns out this chemistry was real. The two were actually in a relationship for three years during the show's run. This was the only like public relationship that he claimed from the show, which prompted the other girls sometimes to be against Voorhees. Voorhees and Mark Paul appeared to be the perfect couple when they made appearances together at events such as award shows, red carpets, and film premieres. They were often seen walking arm in arm, stealing kisses between photo ops, and gushing about each other in interviews. 
Fans of the show rooted for the couple to make it long term, but unfortunately, they split in 1993 after three years together. When asked about her relationship with Mark Paul many years later, where he's described how important it was to her at the time, she noted how romantic he was and said it wasn't just an ordinary kind of love. It had a deeper meaning beyond what people would call puppy love. Although their romance didn't last forever, both stars remained close friends after the split and have since reunited for occasional Saved by the Bell reunions. Now let's get into her and Martin Lawrence. In 1993, Lark Voorhees and Martin Lawrence began a romance that seemed to be headed towards the altar. But what began as a fairy tale ended abruptly when Martin went on the Arsenio Hall show and announced his plans to marry someone else. The devastating news left Lark heartbroken and it appears that the scars from this breakup ran far deeper than anyone could have imagined. Dustin Diamond, who played Screech on Saved by the Bell, noticed strange behavior in Lark during their reunion recording session for the show's DVD release. He stated that she had become increasingly withdrawn and would flinch or rock back and forth whenever a man's voice was projected near her. Diamond seems to imply that Martin Lawrence beat her up or at least completely messed up her life through some kind of, you know, harsh dealings, be it mental or physical. It seemed like she had retreated into her own little world where the pain of her relationship with Lawrence couldn't reach her. So it was after this relationship that people noticed that, okay, she's not holding it together. She was always to herself as they described weird, but after her relationship with Martin Lawrence, maybe the embarrassment of him announcing like his engagement, it was just the final straw for her that made her retreat. She wrote on her Instagram that Martin Lawrence is no saint either abuse is abuse. These men need to be held accountable for their well-documented actions, preying on innocent women. The truth is in the pudding, LV. So, and a lot of people were talking about how Martin Lawrence, even Tisha Campbell, had spoken out about the way he dealt with her on the show. A lot of people, you know, who knows? Comment below your thoughts on that. It's impossible to know exactly what happened between her and Martin during their time together, but we can assume that whatever it was caused deep emotional trauma that lingered long after they split. And unfortunately, no amount of time can erase the hurt she must have felt when Martin decided to end their relationship so publicly. Voorhees then married music engineer Miguel Coleman in 1996 and separated six years later in 2001 before divorcing three years after that in 2004. So she dated this guy named Jimmy and the couple first met at a networking event in 2014 and began dating shortly after dating. They tied the knot on April 30th, 2015. Despite their fairy tale beginning, things quickly went south for the newlyweds. In September 2015, just five months after their wedding day, Voorhees filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences as the cause. Since then, little has been heard publicly about his union and what led to such a sudden end. Jimmy Green struggled to adjust to the life in Hollywood and was uncomfortable with how much attention his wife was receiving from fans and photographers. He also allegedly had issues with her finances, which reportedly caused arguments between them towards the end of their marriage. He also had trouble with her mom, who had a restraining order out on him because she was still living with her mom, though they were married, but the mom did not allow him to be at the house. and was like, okay, you could be married to her, but she has to stay with me. Like the mom was just doing her job and looking out for her daughter, trying to, you know, protect her daughter because she had already started spiraling after that. He was basically caught sleeping in the closet and when she tried to get him to be out he threw gang signs at her according to her words and he admitted to being in a gang and so they put training order out on him and Lark even went on Instagram but claimed she was hacked stating that his down there region his intimate parts smelled like corn chips <laughs> Oh man, you can't make this up. So as of now, it is unclear if Voorhees is currently seeing someone or if she's single and focusing on her career once again. Now let's get into the saddest part, which is her mental health. In recent years, Voorhees has been in the news for reasons unrelated to her acting career. In 2006, Voorhees filed a lawsuit against the National Enquirer over a claim that she has substance problems, which was later dropped. What many people don't know, however, is that Voorhees also had a history of mental health struggles and diagnosis, including schizoaffective behavior. The difficulties Voorhees has endured with her mental health began during childhood and have persisted throughout her adult life. Growing up, she experienced periods of depression that left her feeling unable to cope with everyday life. Voorhees experienced early signs of mental illness as early as 15 and during her time filming Saved by the Bell. She was often seen as moody and unpredictable on set. With the help of therapy, she was able to gain insight into her condition and improve her
her understanding of how it affected her daily functioning. In 2004, after several years living with what she thought was just bouts of depression and anxiety, doctors diagnosed Voorhees with schizoaffective disorder. Schizoaffective disorder is a combination of schizophrenia symptoms and those of a mood disorder such as depression or bipolarity. It is also characterized by psychosis where sufferers have difficulty distinguishing reality from fantasy or having delusion. For Voorhees, these symptoms presented themselves as extreme paranoia and delusional behavior. The actress admits to having difficulty managing her emotions saying, I'm very sensitive and I have feelings that just fly out like bullets, end quote. She also said, I think it's important for people to understand that everyone should take the necessary precautions and seek help if they feel overwhelmed or mentally stressed. This diagnosis changed everything for her as it impacted how she managed herself both mentally and physically. For example, ensuring that she got enough rest and stayed on top of taking medications prescribed by doctors became essential parts of managing the condition. Despite having symptoms of paranoia, depression, and hearing voices when she was younger, she had credited treatments like talk therapy and medication as helping her cope with these issues. She is also an advocate for holistic healing methods such as yoga and meditation. In addition to this, where he said she had been able to find comfort in reading about spirituality and believes it has helped her stay connected to herself spiritually. Voorhees has continued to remain positive about life in general, despite facing challenges associated with mental health issues such as schizoaffective disorder. She believes that having an open dialogue regarding mental health issues can help others understand them better so they can offer more effective support when needed, most by those who are suffering from those kind of illnesses. Today, Lark continues to act but has delved into other interests such as writing books about self -employment empowerment for teens as well as painting abstract art pieces inspired by nature which are all available for purchase online. It is clear that this talented young lady has used both adversity and appreciation for drive for success since childhood, something many can learn from today. Everyone just do a prayer for her. If you watch till the end, put a heart in the comments for her. Do a prayer for her. Just pray that the Lord, you know, brings her back to a good standing and helps her to overcome all of the demons that she is battling and just be stable. There are people that have mental illnesses or that have been diagnosed with schizoaffective that has been able to live, you know, functioning normal lives and manage and get everything under control. And I wish so much for that for her. I can only pray that you don't hear from her too much and we don't see from her too much, but I can only pray that the Lord brings her back to a healthy, you know, functioning young lady. It's really difficult to see her like this. It's really gut-wrenching and heartbreaking. I, I'm praying for her. Do a prayer for her and comment below who else would you guys like to see next. If you guys like the music you're listening to, the link is in the description. Support my brother. I love you guys. Until next time.